So today we're going to be talking about the simplex algorithm, which is an algorithm used to find the maximum solution or the value of the solution of a linear program. Linear programming is used to find the best possible outcome of a mathematical model provided various constraints. For example, you can see that the objective function here is p equals y plus x, and we have the following constraints. In this case, we can easily draw a graph, and we can see that the triangle uh, here encapsulates all feasible solutions. These feasible solutions are encapsulated by a convex hull, which is the minimum polygon which encapsulates all feasible solutions. It's worth saying that the simplex algorithm only works with bounded linear programs. Here, we're given a linear program, <coughs> And before we put it into the simplex, we need to convert it into standard form, then into slack form, then we can put it into the simplex algorithm, and then we get a solution out. So first we're going to learn how to convert a linear program into standard form. We need to ensure four things. Number one, if the objective function is a minimize, we need to convert it into a maximize. This is easily done. We can just multiply through by minus one and convert the minimize into a maximize. Number two, um, if the variable variable doesn't have non-negative constraints, then we need to give it um, non-negative constraints, and we do this by replacing it with two other variables. So in this case, you can see that x and z um, don't have non-negative constraints, and therefore we set x to x prime minus x prime prime, and we do the same for z. And then we simply sub it back into the original equation. Number three, if we have an equality, we need to uh, replace it with two inequalities. So as you can see from the example here, this is very simple. And number four, all the inequalities must be in the correct form. That is, uh, the function must be less than or equal to the constant. So all the variables on one side and the constant on the other side. So we're going to do a quick example of a linear program to standard form. So we're given this uh, linear program here. First, you can see it's a minimize, so we apply rule 1, um, that is, we change it to a maximize and multiply through by minus 1. Then we apply rule 2, as you can see, x and z don't have non-negative constraints, and therefore we need to give it non-negative constraints. Uh, rule 3, uh, we have an equality, x minus z equals 6, and so we simply replace this with two inequalities. And rule 4, you can see that we've brought it all together here, and we've made sure that all of them are in the correct form. That means that the constant's on one side and the constant is greater than or equal to the rest of the function. So now we have our linear program in standard form. So now we're going to convert standard form into slack form. For this, we have to add slack variables which represent the difference between the left and the right hand side of an inequality. So for each inequality in the form ax plus by is less than or equal to c, which we're given to by standard form, we have to rewrite this as s equals c minus ax plus by, where s is our um, slack variable. So as a quick example of this, um, if we find, want to find the uh, uh, solution to this uh, linear program, which is already in standard form, all we have to do is uh, give our objective function a, a variable name, so in this case we're going to be calling it z, um, and we have the slack variables a and b, which we represent, which represent the difference between the left and right hand side of uh, each inequality. a and b in this case we call our basic variables, and x and y are non-basic variables. z in this case um, is our objective function variable. So now we're going to go through the simplex algorithm. The simplex algorithm consists of two easy steps. The first step is to find a basic solution, and the second step is to pivot or iterate until we find the optimal solution. To find the basic solution, we set all non-basic variables to zero, like so. We now have a solution with a value of zero. The pivot. The pivot is an operation which exchanges the position of a basic variable and the non-basic variable. This is done by four easy steps, which we will go through individually. The first step. We select a non-basic variable with a positive coefficient in the objective function. We will select A. 
The second step is to increase the variable as much as possible without increasing any non-negativity constraints. We now want to find the tightest constraint. As you can see, the second function has the tightest constraint. Now we want to switch the rules of A and D. We do that by rearranging the second function so that A equals 9 minus B over 2 minus C over 2 minus D over 2. We now replace A in every function, like so. And we now replace the second function with our newly formed function, like so. We have now completed a pivot and our current solution has a value of 54. As you can see, we now have a better solution. We now check if there are any positive coefficients in the objective function. As you can see, b has a positive coefficient, so let's keep going. We select a non-basic variable with a positive coefficient in the objective function. We will select B. We then increase the variable as much as possible without increasing any non-negativity constraints. And we now find the tightest constraint. As you can see, function number four has the tightest constraint. We now switch the roles of A and D. We rearrange function number 4 so that b equals 6 minus c plus d minus f. We then replace b in every function, like so. And we then replace function number 4 with your newly formed function, like so. We have now completed another pivot. Our current solution has a value of 66. As you can see, we again have a better solution. We now check if there are any positive coefficients in the objective function. There are no more positive non-basic variables, so we cannot optimize the function any further. We have to terminate and we have reached the optimal solution and our optimal solution has a value of 66. Complexity. In the worst case, the simplex algorithm runs in exponential time. This occurs since, in the worst case, the algorithm will visit all vertices. If we have n variables and two n constraints, and each new constraint intersects with all other constraints, we can have up to 2 to the n vertices. However, this is normally not the case, and the algorithm normally runs in polynomial time. Thank you for listening.